The following interview was conducted with Barb and Mark Bowman for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It took place on September 23, 2017 at Boilermaker Station in the Purdue Memorial Union on Homecoming Day. The interviewer is Adriana Harmeyer. So to get us started, could you tell me where you're from, when you attended Purdue, what you studied at Purdue? Go ahead. You came here first. Okay. From Logansport, Indiana. I came to school in, uh, I guess it would have been August, might have been September, <laughs> of 1970. And I stayed and got a bachelor's degree in 1974 in civil engineering and a master's degree in civil engineering in 19, December of 1975. Mm-hmm. And then left. Okay. And then came back as a faculty member later. But your question was about education. Uh-huh. We'll get back to your faculty status. And I am from originally from Champaign, Illinois, but my father is a Purdue alum, so Purdue drew me here. I was in the first graduating class in Consumer and Family Sciences in 1977, Mm -hmm. and then in 1996, I had come back to school and got an associate's degree in organizational leadership and supervision through the School of Technology. Great. Well... Could you tell me what brought you back to Purdue? Uh, well, I, I worked for two years in Michigan, just a little less than two years. Then went back to school, got married first, mm-hmm. and went back to school at the University of Illinois. And when I completed the uh, degree there, I, I started looking for positions, both academic and industry. And I, got, uh, I interviewed here and was given an offer, as well as a couple other places and decided to go go to Purdue. Uh, my mother at the time still lived in Logan Sport, so it was close to her. Mm-hmm. So that was one advantage. And uh, she mentioned that her father studied here. Her father was a civil engineer, and so was my father. Were they here at the both, same Both time? Purdue civil engineers. Mm-hmm. No, Five they, years apart. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And World War II. Veterans. Played havoc with okay, their so education. Okay, so they were here at that time period. Before and after, mm-hmm. yeah. My dad before and her dad after. Right. Mm-hmm. So when was it that you came back to Purdue? It would have been uh, Jan- January 1981 mm-hmm. was when I started officially. And you've been here since then? Yes. Okay. Well, thinking back when you were students, uh, did you both live on campus? Um, I lived on Tarkington Hall my freshman year, and then I lived in Triangle Fraternity. Uh, for the rest of the time when I was an undergraduate. And then when I was in graduate school, I lived in a little apartment on uh, University Street, about a half block away from Triangle. Okay. And I lived in Shreve Hall, the Shreve Hilton, as they called it (laughs) Mm -hmm. back then. It had a salad bar, which was unheard of in those days. And um, then I pledged Alpha Gamma Delta, and then my three years, I lived up on the acres at the Alpha Gam house. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, were you active in student organizations? I was in Block P, the f- card section. And by my senior year, I was the president of Block P. And I was active in civil engineering in the ASC student chapter and the Chi Epsilon chapter, which you can see I have my shirt on today. Mm-hmm because I'm the advisor now of Chi Epsilon. Mm -hmm. Um, So those were a couple of organizations I was active in. Uh, I was active in uh, some intramural sports. Um, I played rugby for two years. Um, It was through the co-rec, but it was was kind of a formal thing. Mm -hmm. Did you attend a lot of sporting events as students? Yeah. Basketball games, football games. Mm -hmm. I think weren't season tickets free at the time for students Pretty or much. they were very much dirt cheap yeah. they were part of the fees mm-hmm. and being part of block p i joined it as a freshman because that's it was for freshmen but then i was on the junior board and then the senior board with that so mm-hmm. yes i did go to the football games and went to basketball games too do you regularly attend homecoming festivities um 
I wouldn't say we go to every single one, but yeah, quite a few we, we come. And You're usually working. I, yeah, we hit, in civil engineering, we host a, a breakfast each year for the alumni, and so that's put on by the faculty. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm usually here every year at the breakfast for sure. Mm-hmm. And then Triangle, and you stop the triangle. in. He's the faculty advisor at Triangle huh. and has been for a long time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, And then if we have friends coming... Or we decide to get a ticket, mm-hmm. then we'll come over. But usually it's easier just to avoid all the congestion if you live in town. <laughs> I understand that. What are your favorite places on campus? The Union was always a haven to me because living in Shreve and then on the Acres, that was pre bus service. So to walk from our house to the Union, it was a good 25 minute walk. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was always a little haven because you could find little niches to study in and rooms that are no longer existing where you could go and just enjoy. And it didn't make sense to go back and forth to the places if you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. So probably the union and I'd have to think on that because (laughs) there were so many buildings that are now different and my I was in interior design and my art classes were in the old Quonset huts that were temporary and 30 years later still here Mm -hmm. that located where um, Armstrong Hall is so the Union was a safe haven for me Mm -hmm. yeah I'd always enjoyed the Union too I mean that's kind of like a home away from home Mm -hmm. and so that's a place that we would go a lot. Um, um, and, of course, the Civil Engineering Building. How could I not say that? <laughs> <laughs> but you lived across the street, basically, yeah. for three years. So yeah. you could easily go home right. as needed. Do you think the union has stayed pretty similar over the years? Does it feel different? When they still have the same chairs, I'm glad that they've kept those. <laughs> They're sturdy chairs. They have the union motif with the windows. So they have to change with the times. But They've upgraded you know. the hotel a lot. Mm-hmm. Yes. Matter of fact, when I interviewed here, I stayed at the hotel. They put me up in there, and it was like a, a prison room. I mean, it was incredible. It was like a, a single brass bed and one little table. I don't think there was any carpet. It, 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 really, it looked like a prison. It really did. <laughs> thought, wow, <laughs> they're behind the times. <laughs> but um, they've they've done a nice job upgrading the uh, Union Club here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the bowling alley and the, you know the pappies and and all that. That's that's. I, I like the cafeteria downstairs when they used to have that instead mm-hmm. of the food courts. But I know nowadays that the food courts mm-hmm. the way it is. Uh, but so I kind of miss the cafeteria where you could go in and. Pick what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I just want a salad today or if I just want a sandwich, I can get that right there. Um, so I kind of miss that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I miss the sweet shop because I used to spend a lot of times with those big tall booths that they have. They had, mm-hmm. you know, where yeah. Pappy's is now. Right. In the, what, 1869 room. Yeah. I think they still have some of those. But mm-hmm. that was nice and cozy yeah. down there. And then when my senior year, I worked in the food service in the cafeteria line, mm-hmm. and it was green mint tile, ceramic, ceramic tile walls, and it was your traditional cafeteria. Mm-hmm. So to see the upgraded cafeteria was a huge improvement. Mm-hmm. So now, I mean, it's just totally different. So, so, But they've kept, architecturally, it's still the same, and they still have some of the lounges in those areas that still keep the essence of the union. Mm -hmm. What do you think has stayed the same about Purdue over the years? Hmm. I think it's changed a lot, I would have to say. (laughs) But I think, you know, you still have um, a lot of great students here. I think that's always been true, Mm -hmm. Purdue. I mean, people come from out of state. We have a lot of out of state students. If you go to like, uh, because I went to Illinois, 
It's like everybody from Chicago goes down there, you know. So it's like a Chicago. And Illinois. Yeah, and Illinois. And yeah, because like my high school, school, everybody went there. So yeah. Purdue, you'll you'll meet people from you know Delaware and California and all over the country. Um, not that you won't at the other school, but I think Purdue is pretty unique in that. It mm-hmm. seems to me, really draw from all over the country. And now the big change that I've seen is the huge influx of international students especially at the undergrad level. Mm -hmm. I know part of that's, uh, I'm not going to get into politics, but part of it's financial. The university wants to expand, and I think they've they've said this openly. Mm -hmm. They want to increase the number of uh, uh, undergrads from out of the country because they collect more tuition and fees. It's just economics. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But that's, that's a change. So I would say... It was easier to get into Purdue years ago like when I was a student. Mm-hmm. It's ha- much harder now for if you're in state. It's a more competitive. It is more competitive for sure. But I think there were a lot of great students always because they drew from people from other states. Mm-hmm. Well, th- thank you for sharing with me today. Do you have any last thoughts or memories? Yeah, you one want more to thing. Share? <laughs> When I was a student here, the enrollment was around just a little more than 20,000. Mm-hmm. Now it's 40,000. That's a big change. That is a yeah. big change. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. And the campus has exploded, mm-hmm. too. You know, just the changes even up on the acres, how it has, and the changes with the athletic fields, yeah. with intramural fields going and new dorms coming up. So, you know, yeah, and my schools, neither school exists anymore. <laughs> so, you know, I still have engineering that's stable that I can cheer for, even though I wasn't in it. But, but no, you know. And then we have a son. One of our three kids went to Purdue. So mm-hmm. we're glad we passed that along to at least one of our kids. Family so, tradition. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. So, okay. Well, thank you. All right. Mm-hmm.